<clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. My name is Dr. Carrie Olson, and I'm the president of the Denver Public Schools Board of Education. Vice President Jennifer Bacon and I are here today as we, along with other board members, have spent most of our morning listening to our students share some of their concerns and frustrations. They spoke to all of us forcefully, powerfully, about their thoughts about their safety, the safety of the camp their campuses, and there's nothing more important to us than the safety of the students in our district. On Friday, we took action as a board to censure Director Anderson for falling short of the high standards we expected of a public official and of an education leader. Our students from across the district today told us there has not been enough action to prevent, to protect the safety and to send the message that this behavior by a board member is unacceptable. They told us today that they are embarrassed and disappointed to see how Director Anderson is responding to the censure by continuing to disparage and attack anyone who has concern about his behavior towards students. As a result of today's conversations with students, we're going to include their voices and their thoughts as we continue the work we've already started on establishing a code of conduct for school board members. This would clearly spell out the high standards of behavior for our elected public board members to help ensure we are upholding the public trust and showing leadership in creating a safe and welcoming school for our students and their families and our staff. A major part of this code of conduct will also be strict policies about board members' social media communications. And the code of conduct will also place clear protocols and consequences for misconduct to help ensure accountability. I would like to thank all of the students who took time to speak to their board members today. We are tremendously impressed with their character, their strength, and their advocacy. And we will honor their voices. We listened and we will act. I also want to emphasize that we know this is a very difficult issue and can be triggering for people as some of the students shared with us this morning. And there's more information at the bluebench.org. We would encourage anyone who's experiencing a tr triggering moment from this from the conversations from today and over the weekend to contact the Blue Bench. It is an organization that offers 24-hour sexual assault hotline. That number is 303-322-7273. And there's more information on the website. I'd now like to invite Vice President Jennifer Bacon to make a few additional remarks. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Olson. Our students' messages came through today loud and clear. We need to do more to make sure that our students feel safe and that board members are held accountable. Everything we do as education leaders sends a message, sends a message to our students. They learn from us, from our actions and our inaction. As Dr. Olson noted, we have heard the actions we need to take. As demonstrated today, this issue has been a major disruption to our district priorities, our schools, and to students' learning for far too long. From our students' actions to Director Anderson's actions, today is the loudest and clearest example of that. We all know that our students have had far too many disruptions these last 18 months, and we want to emphasize the importance of us being able to do the work that is important to this district. The investigation is over. The board has taken action to censure Director Anderson. We need there to be no more disruptions to the precious learning time and board responsibilities that we have. In order for that to happen, as our students told us today, there needs to be more action and more accountability. We hope Director Anderson will help in that process and not provoke and disparage anyone who has concerns with his behavior. In addition to working with our students to strengthen our accountability measures, we all commit to more discussion and tangible support for triggering conversations. Our students and our community need and deserve that. We're calling on Director Anderson to be a part of moving us forward and stopping the disruption to our students' education. Thank you. We just have time for a couple of questions, please. Yeah. Uh, Director Anderson called uh, the mode, the investigation, a high-tech lynching. Um, you spoke uh, uh, pointedly about uh, some of the racial issues involved in this uh, on Friday. What are your 
comments about sort of his rhetoric on, uh, on the allegations and the investigation. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone that Director Anderson had a very fair, independently run investigation, as well as a thorough process. Um, so that is my response to the historical references and accusation as part of that is the lack of um, clear, strong, external um, investigations. So we took the steps necessary to ensure that due process was properly given. Um, and we hope that um, you know, people will really take that into account into those references. So as I mentioned on Friday, I know that um, where it's only up to Director Anderson and the voters whether he continues or not. And until then, I look forward to working with him on a code of conduct. I look forward to a facilitated conversation with him as he's asked for. I look forward to working with him as the board doesn't have a power to remove um, Director Anderson. It's only up to him and the voters to decide. But until then, as Vice President Bacon mentioned, we want to get back to the work of Denver Public Schools. We've got a few issues to talk about. Um, we're going to do a deep dive into academics here tonight. In a few minutes, we're going to continue our discussion on policy governance. I know COVID protocols, transportation, heat, all are on people's minds. All right, one more question. Uh, you mentioned that you heard the voices of the students loud and clear, and you also spoke with those students afterwards. Uh, can you outline the differences in that policy from today as from yesterday? And what was the main message of the students that you heard when you spoke with them outside and in private meetings? Sure. Today, the students really talked about um, they want to feel safe. They want to um, be safe on social media. They're concerned about some of the posts that they've seen on social media and the implication. They asked us a lot about what is the code of conduct for board members on social media. And as of right now, we don't have one. And so we're looking forward to delineating that. We're looking forward to working with our students. They have a lot of ideas, as you can imagine. Our students um, have some fabulous ideas, and they all have committed to sending us what their ideas are. Dr. Marrero has established a student council that has a representative from every high school. And those groups are going to be meeting and sharing their ideas with the board. I committed that Vice President Bacon and I would meet with them to continue to hear from them to see what they would like to see in a code of conduct. They also mentioned, as we had mentioned on Friday, what we have in place for our staff. And that should be the same for the board as well. Is Just to follow up on that, is there any you know, guidelines that you put in the future for the removal? Based on their conduct. We haven't gotten that far yet. I've looked at some of the samples of code of conduct from across our country as people have sent them to us, and we'll look forward to being able to del clearly delineate some of those steps. All right, they got to go to a board meeting. Yep, sorry, we have a board, board meeting starting. Thank you very much.